All right. The book Three Women is one of the summer's most anticipated debuts. Author Lisa Tadeo spent eight years traveling the, the country to share the stories of three different women's sexual desires. Lena is an Indiana housewife who says she is in a loveless marriage and has an affair. Sloan owns a Rhode Island restaurant with her chef husband and says she has an open marriage. And Maggie is in North Dakota and says she was underage when she had a relationship with her married English teacher. A jury acquitted the accused teacher of three charges, and a judge dismissed the last two charges. Three Women is published by Avid Reader Press. That's an imprint of Simon & Schuster, a CBS company. Lisa Tadeo joins us at the table. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So one of the questions with you is like, well, what are her qualifications? And my answer is, <laughs> her qualifications are nearly a decade of reporting, crisscrossing the country, moving you and, uh, to, to, to towns to spend time with these people. It, you put flyers up in restaurants and bars, <laughs> interviewed hundreds of people about their, their, their state of desire. What did you learn? I learned that we're all united in our passion and in how much, how much we hide it and how much we don't want to talk about it. And I think that desire is something we think about so often. And it's also the thing that we hold most closely to our chest. So I wanted to explore the nuance of that intersection. You say we, but this is not a book about we. This yeah. is a book about women. <laughs> yeah. Why did you exclude men? I didn't exclude them. I, um, I started by talking to both men and women. I spoke mm -hmm. to hundreds of each gender. But it just became, I started to be more interested in the complexity of female desire, which I found to just have a lot more prismatic and complex feelings attached to it. I want to know what a simple machine, I think. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to know what your flyer said. What was oh, your God. pitch to get people? Oh, gosh. And <laughs> is there a difference between desire and sex? What did your flyer say to get people so, to talk to you? My flyers, you know, I made them in a Staples in Santa Barbara, so they were not exactly <laughs> the most uh, elegant mm -hmm. of, of things. They said, you know, unrequited love, question mark. Do you, they were all different. Do you have a compelling story of desire? If so, you know, email me at, and I, I got, you know, a number of interesting emails and none of the actual people that I profiled came from the flyers but I learned a lot from them. What's the difference between the, desire or is there a difference? Between yeah I think there's sex? absolutely a difference. I think that sex you know is an act and and people are very comfortable often in describing the act. It's easy to talk about it in a sense uh, but because it's mechanical a lot of the time but when it comes to desire it's a matter of talking about the very difficult and interesting emotions that come that are behind sex and I find that you know, women were more articulate in describing those. I read this book over the 4th of July and I, I couldn't put it down. <laughs> and, and one of the things that really struck me with the three men, women that you ended up choosing is that, that each of them ultimately they, their desire was secret in, e, in each case in a, in a form mm -hmm. and they were ultimately punished for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? Well, That's yeah. such a good observation. So yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Came from a guy. <laughs> Came Just from saying. a guy. A yeah. lot of wonderful Jeez. observations. So good. Yeah, that. that's good. Uh, you know, it, it was one of the, the most, um, one of the biggest commonalities between the three women who were vastly different was that they were all judged by their communities in ways that were remarkable. And they weren't really doing anything completely outside of the norm, but because because they were slightly aberrant, it was easy for people to judge them. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised at that judgment? Yes, it was shocking. I mean, it was shocking on, you know, a number of different levels for Sloan, who is the entrepreneur in the Northeast. The, one of the first rumors I heard about her was that her husband wanted to be intimate with her every day. And not only did she allow it, but she enjoyed it. And this was oh, sort no. of delivered. Is she, is she okay? <laughs> but not only that, but they were the one who he also enjoyed watching her have sex with other men, and they enjoyed photographing, videotaping. Yes, you know, and they were a different kind of couple. Yeah, it was different. But what I will say is, it was one of the happiest marriages that I observed. Are they still together? They are, and they're That's very right. extraordinarily happy. But what's interesting is that you can imagine that man telling, talking about his marriage or it becoming public, and, and not being embarrassed by the details of it. But the woman might feel differently. Yes. And so this goes to the point that men are very open in pursuing whatever they desire mm -hmm. and women as you write in the prologue they often subvert their desire on an hourly basis yes why I think it's just it's easier for me, for for centuries we've been okay you know the male the state of male desire is accepted whereas the state of female desire is largely 
is largely told by what the men want. And obviously, this is changing in remarkable ways. And with the Me Too movement, we're finally saying, well, we don't want. But I do think, as women, we're not really expressing what we do want, because there is a very quiet judgment underlying everything you, we say. You wrote this largely, or you researched it largely before the Me Too yes, movement really, correct. really developed. Uh, you don't really mention the Me Too movement. Well, you know, because I, I, I... Well, one of the reasons, as you said, was that it was largely researched and reported prior. But the other thing was that I, I was really wanting to explore what we do want and what we can't talk about. And I think there's enough out there about what we don't talk about. But I think what we do talk about is so strikingly important. What was fascinating to me, too, Lisa, is the way you wrote it, because it reads like a novel. Yes. I, I kept going back and forth saying, this is true? This really happened? <laughs> I mean, was that a deliberate, clearly a deliberate choice on your part? Because it reads like a novel. Well, you know, it, it was a choice in the sense that I, I wanted to, I wanted it to be really honest. And so I asked these women the same question hundreds of times. I spent, you know, I would spend two hours dissecting one text message. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, and often I would go to, like with Lena, where she was intimate with uh, Aiden, the, the man from high school from with high whom school. she was stratospherically obsessed. Very passionate. Very passionate. Very and, obsessed. <laughs> in, a, in a truck, yeah. In a truck, yes. And so I would go to the spot after she had been intimate with him at this river. No. And I would just sit there and take in the smells and the mm -hmm. sounds so I could layer those those. Well, it feels, it feels like it you're living inside these women's it heads. It's incredibly Every moving well done, thought yeah. they're having. Lisa and, Today, oh, thank you. Three women. Yes. It's a fascinating book. Congrats. It's on sale now.